everyone today I'm going to show you how to make these crochet dish scrubbers I use these when I'm doing the dishes um, in place of more heavy-duty sponges sometimes those are needed you know for specific kinds of I guess dirty dishes but most of the time I've had good luck with these and just a little bit of elbow, go elbow grease takes it takes it to a whole other level and these add a little bit of extra grip in this is a, is a strand held double with the yarn. It's a strand of crochet cotton and it adds a little extra grip plus the way the pattern goes it ends up having these little extra ridges and that really helps kind of get the get the the grime off of your dishes. Alright, let's go ahead and get started. In order to make this dish scrubber you're going to need the following. You are going to need a size G crochet hook which is 4.25 millimeters you're going to need a tapestry needle to weave in your ends and you're going to need a pair of scissors of course to cut your yarn and then for the yarn you are going to need a strand of each this is crochet cotton it's a size 10 crochet thread and then you're going to need um, a worsted weight yarn. I am using cotton as well. I believe this is Lily Sugar and Cream and I believe the color was tangerine. I believe. So um, I can double check if, if you anyone's interested you let me know. But um, you can use really any worsted weight. I just like to use cotton for these. So Okay you're gonna hold two strands together or a strand of each rather together. So I've got a strand of the yarn and a strand of the crochet thread. And then we're going to need to make a slip knot. So in order to do that you just wrap the yarn like so. Use your hook to go under that one, over this one, pull through. And then tighten it up not too tight just remember when you're doing your chain stitches you know you're not trying to do them super tight just be a little loose with it but we do need to go ahead and just make 26 chains so you just yarn over pull through yarn over pull through just keep going until you have 26 which I'm gonna go ahead and do and I will come back when I have finished making them and we'll go ahead and get started after that on the next row at least. Okay, I have done 26 chains and that's what it looks like. You can sort of see, because I used white thread, you can definitely see where the crochet cotton is. That's fine. Again, this is just, you know, to add a little bit of extra scrub to the whole thing. So for the first row, which this will be your right side row, just for information, you are going to single crochet in the second chain from the hook. So, again, we don't count the one that's on the hook, so it's one, two. So we're going to single crochet into that stitch there. Just make sure that you're going under both strands of the yarn. There you go. And then we're going to work single crochets all the way back to the end. So, you know, single crochet, you just insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, and pull through two. Okay, I'll go ahead and I'll work my way back to the end of the row and then I'll show you what to do next. Again, just just as you're doing it, just make sure that you're getting under both rows. You can sort of feel it if you snag the cotton thread, which is going to be the most likely thing that gets skipped. So just kind of feel it. You can certainly, you know, look at it and tell, but you can feel it as well. 
All right, I'll be back when we're ready to start the next row. Okay, I have went ahead and done all the crochets. You do um, 25 stitches and yeah. So in order to start the next round, you just need to chain one and then turn. Okay, so you're gonna be working into the next stitch so not this one there, but here. And you're gonna be working to the front loop only. Since it's facing away from you, you kind of have to maybe turn it around just to see what you're doing, but you normally would go under both parts of the V, but this one you're just doing that. And again, we're gonna single crochet our way back. And what ends up happening is it creates just a little extra ridge versus if you worked through both, you know, both um, loops. So I'll come back when I'm done with this and show you what to do next. Okay, so I am almost at the end. So I did the chain one and then I have done 23 single crochets. Because the, um, so the first chain or the chain, the turning chain, it counts as a stitch in this pattern. So just keep that in mind. Now for the last stitch, we're going to just work right there. I will show you what it looks like if you just work into the front loop only. See that little hole? You do get a little hole there. So it doesn't really bother me that much, but in order to make the fabric a little less holy, for the last stitch, go ahead and work into both. For the last stitch, go ahead and work into both sides of the V. So into the whole stitch. Remember to remember to grab the other strand as well, okay. and see it makes that the fabric a little bit more closed there. It's up to you. If you don't mind the holes, I'd recommend just doing um, just doing it through the front loop only. Okay. Then we're going to go ahead and just turn, or sorry, chain one and turn. Try to combine those words there. Now for this row, we are going to, in the next stitch, so not this one, because the chain in this one counts as a stitch, and this pattern counts as a stitch. So in the next stitch, we are going to work into the back loop only. Not losing your yarn, of course. So. Turn it around. We're going to work right here. And we're going to single crochet across. And I do kind of have to turn when I'm working on it to sort of turn it towards me so I can see exactly what I'm doing. So you can see I did not grab both strands right there. So there you go. Okay, and I'll go ahead and work my way across the back of it. You can see it creates these little, little bits, these little tabs almost, where when you're scrubbing, it's going to catch on that. All right, I'll go ahead and I will meet you back at the end. Okay, I'm back at the end. Now, if you work through just the back loop, because see the see how it's turned towards you right there. If you work through just that back loop, you will get a hole again. So, if you're, you know, if that's a problem for you, go ahead and work under both loops. Now, 
Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna alternate rows two and three. We just finished row three. Row two is the one where we work through the front loops only. And we're gonna just continue to do that until we have about four inches or so. And then once you've done that, I will um, come back and I will show you how to finish it all up. And it's, you know, you'll have a little dish scrubber. Again, you can make this slightly different uh, size and everything like that. So just, you know, if, if you need one that's a different size, go ahead and, and certainly go ahead and make it that way. And I forgot to mention, I think this is about six and a half inches wide. So like my first row ended up being about six and a half inches wide. So that way you know if your gauge is about the same as mine. All right, I'll meet you back when we're at four inches. Okay, I'm back. I have finished four inches. Um, now, I didn't forget to mention before I cut the video off, before you start the next row, you always are going to chain one and turn for both row two and row three, the, the ones that you repeat. So, just wanted to mention that. And so I've done 14, or I'm sorry, 14. I've done four inches of um, basically creating a, a nice rectangle. And you will need to end on an even row. So the last, um, so the last row that you complete should be where you work through the front loop only. And so it should look like this. Okay, so this is the wrong side. This is the side that's going to go on the inside, and this is the right side. And you can see, like, it'll have a different texture. So you've got the one row there, and then that row has the, um, the extra little bit right there. So, Whereas this side just has these, it looks more uniform on this side. So that's how you know, just in case you're having a hard time telling. And the 14, the reason I said 14 is because you actually, or in order for me to get four inches, I did 14 rows total. Okay, so then in order to basically turn this from a rectangle into a scrubber, you will need to fold it in half. You want this part on the outside because it has extra ridges. Let's see, we can see better like that. See those extra ridges there? Yeah, you totally want those to be on the outside because they're extra scrubby. And then you're going to turn it. And actually it might be better to turn it that way so that way the yarn's in the back automatically. And what we're going to do is we're going to just do, we're going to work our way across and we're just going to do, um, chain stitches or slip stitches rather so you're going to just go ahead and insert your hook into the top there and you can do it into the you can do it into the back loop I'm going to do it into both loops it doesn't have to be exactly precise but there you go so there's your edge when I've got them through both there and then you're just going to slip stitch. And you're going to work your way across. Try to catch both. Try to catch both loops. Okay, there you go. My camera was having a little hard time focusing, but you can see I've got it under both loops there. And you're just going to work your way to the edge, or to the corner rather. Try to do your, um, your loops just a little loose. You want to do that so that way um, that edge doesn't get very tight. So when you pull up for there, just make it a little... Don't pull it as snug. Make it just a little looser. You could go up a hook size or two if you know you have a hard time keeping it even or and you you know and you want it to look nice and uniform. Since I'm making these for my you know for myself. It's not 
so important to me if they are exactly, exactly the same. Okay, and you'll just work your way over. And then what you're going to do, um, if you want to make a loop, you know, if you want yours to have a loop so you can hang it up, which I like to have so that way I can just hang it up on the, um, around the faucet so that way it can dry, you're going to work your way to the edge. Sorry, that was a little stuck in there. So that's, that's what it looks like there. And it actually gives a little extra scrub right there at the very top too. So you will work your way almost, almost to the edge. So what I do is just go right there and instead of, before you start, before you start on that last section there, you're going to chain 12. You may need, if your faucet is um, thicker or something than mine, you may need to chain a few extra. Just go ahead and join it. We're going to do just another slip stitch. And this one's a little tricky. You should have a stitch on the edge. Hang on. I think I grabbed the... Uh, You should have another stitch on the edge since there were 25 stitches total. Okay. And there you go. Now you're going to go ahead and bind off, cut the yarn, you'll weave in your ends later. And now you're going to need to do the same thing for the other side. I'm going to put a note at the beginning. If you want to, you can leave this tail extra long, but I just prefer to go ahead and um, join the join the yarn again and just start over. Just because I'm always kind of afraid that I'm going to either have like, I'm just going to have not enough yarn when I get there. And then I'll have to join another section anyway, so I might as well just go ahead and do it from the beginning. That's how it works in my mind, at least. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I made a slip knot. Okay. And then we're going to join. You can either join from the front or the back. It doesn't really matter. The only thing I recommend not doing is see how there's that little bit of space there. You can join there if you want, but I'm actually going to join in the space next to it. And there. Okay. And I'm sorry if that's blurry. I don't know why it's blurring out like that. There we go. Okay, and then again, we're just going to work our way over. And you, uh, since you're using the end stitches, you know, there's, um, you're not working through, or you're not working under both loops. There's just one, one loop. It's fairly easy to do. Again, try not to pull the loop up and pull too tight when you do. You just want to make it, you know, even. That's all. I'm just going to go ahead and bind off again, 
cut the yarn. And then all that's left to do is just weave in the ends. What I'm going to do is um, take a tapestry needle, put it through so it's on the inside, turn this inside out, and then weave in the ends on the inside there. I'll go ahead and weave in the ends, and so that way I can show you what it looks like when it's all finished. And I'll be right back. All right, here you go. Here's your finished dish scrubber. There you see. It's got the little handle on it and everything. It fits my hand. I can spread my fingers in there, and you know, there's. It's actually got. Ooh, it's actually got a little bit of extra space, but I like it like that. If you prefer yours to be a little bit more snug, go ahead and just do fewer rows. And you can just scrub really, really well. And it's got these little extra ridges on there to make things a little less grippy for you. I have not had any issues with this damaging anything. It is just cotton after all. But if you have more delicate... Um, dishes and cookware than I do, you may want to test it out first, but I've not had any problems. And I have, um, I've got some non-stick pans and some, um, regular stick pans. <laughs> the kind that you have to, you know, be careful with, so, because things stick to them. But I've not had any problems with it, and I think they work out really well. So let me know in the comments if you make one of these. I'd love to hear about it. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.